Let's go to Parliament now, where Majority Leader Osei Chemin Sabunsu says all MPs in the new Patriotic Party caucus in Parliament won Finance Minister Ken Ovarieta out of office. During a media engagement Thursday, the leader noted he will investigate reports alleging some members of his caucus were almost induced with money to back down claims for the Finance Minister to be sacked. We'll be speaking with political analyst Jonathan Asantiotri on this issue. But ahead of that conversation, let's listen to Majority Leader Oseichi Min Sabunsu. It's an attempted bribery case, uh, whether bribery or inducement or whatever. As I stated, yes, it's come to my notice. And, uh, that issue has come before us. Let me, let me say that... Uh, it is not the group that started that, um, that maybe somebody attempted to bribe. I'm saying so because even though the issue started with uh, about 80 plus, the, the group of 80 plus, the caucus meeting aligned with the position of that group. So it's no longer the cause of the 80 plus group. It's the, the, the agenda for the entire caucus. And we're having some discussions on that. Uh, but um, with particular reference to the attempted bribery, as I've been informed about that, and as I responded to the same matter um, when I was interviewed by one of your prime stations, I said that it's come before me. Um, We'll investigate if it is true, and if it's true, to establish the motive of uh, that person. Political analyst Jonathan Asante Autry joins us live now. Good afternoon to you, uh, Mr. Autry. Good afternoon. Now, Majority Leader Osei Chairman Sabunsu has declared that the entire Majority Caucus is now in support of the calls for Finance Minister Ken Ofurieta to be sacked. What signal does this send about this eighth parliament and how issues have been handled so far? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon to our viewers. Um, the point ought to be made that the economic quagmire that we find ourselves obviously has affected all and sundry, including those who support the party in government and those who are opposed to the party in government. And obviously the signals that are coming from the constituents of the party in government are not good. And that is the more reason why they said that uh, the position that they have taken is from their constituents. So if their constituents are lying, then obviously they are equally lying. Mm -hmm. But to have the rest of the majority caucus coming on board, and of course I heard, you know, the deputy majority leader virtually giving more or less like an olive branch to Ken Foriata. I'm wondering if he's equally part of those who have come on board. The reality is that the warnings that are coming from the various, you know, uh, constituencies mm -hmm. of the majority caucuses are not good. The signals are really not good. Mm -hmm. And the point is that they have come to the realization that the, those at the helm of affairs of the party, as it were, do not really care about the health and the future health of the party. And maybe they have gotten whatever they need to get, mm -hmm. and they are no more thinking about the future health of the party. So if they are supposed to protect their seats going forward, as it were, even if they do lose the national elections in 2024, you know, they are more interested in their seat because that representation in Parliament is equally important if they are to be able to check the NDC if the NDC should win the election in 2024. Mm. And that is the more reason why they have taken such a posture. Mm. And, and what does this mean for the executive and the fate of the finance minister? Well, I think that... As, as long as the executive delays on this, mm -hmm. then they are creating some kind of instability in the country in terms of governance, in terms of the politics, in terms of the security. And I think that the president should not wait till the finance minister goes down the wire before he thinks of, you know, relieving him. I don't know exactly what is holding the president back. 
I mean, the issues that the president has used as the alibi to keep the, the, the finance minister, I think that these issues are untenable. Mm. I mean, you, the president doesn't want to tell us that should the finance minister die today, he's not going to have anybody to read the budget, right. to prepare the budget, knowing very well that the budget is not prepared by an individual. And the president cannot tell us that he's not going to have anybody to lead. That's it. I don't even know the finance minister is a leader of the negotiation. Mm -hmm. Besides, does it even come out that, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, that the reading of the budget is going to delay? Why? Because the negotiation has stalled. Right. All these things point to the fact that we need to take drastic action as far as the finance minister and then Charles Dubois are concerned. No two ways about that. Mm. And the, the president should also not forget, there is a code preco reloaded. Now, these things virtually will create a situation where the city in itself will continuously tumble. Right. And the president says that he can pay the day. And that when you continuously speak down your currency, obviously to have an effect. Mm. And I think that I'm tempted to agree with that because it is said that you do not use your left finger to point at your home. If you do know it means that that is a denigrative kind of gesture. Mm -hmm. So I think what the majority has done is in order. Mm -hmm. um, there is some kind of simmering political tension between the two fashions, mm -hmm. as it were, when it comes to the, the, the constituents of the MPP, the Dumbo and the Dalqua, you know, fashion, as it were, because of the future stakeholdership, you know, as far as the party, the party is concerned. Mm. Jonathan Asante Otre is a political analyst. Thank you very much indeed. Now